Before I start the topic that's a part of this video, I would like to point out the following. I do not support, stand for, appreciate, or anything that is in favor of domestic violence. If I rub anyone the wrong way with this video, I apologize in advance. The purpose of this video is to educate and to share my point of view regarding the topic. And once again, I say that I do not support domestic violence. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 video right here. Now, this is going to be a serious topic that I have to put my Driving Pet P Part 4 video on hold for next week because of something that caught my attention this past Friday. So let me give you our backstory first. Back in February, Baltimore Ravens football player Ray Rice was caught on camera that somehow found his way to TMZ. Oh boy, them again. He was caught in camera dragging his unconscious fiance out of an elevator. So with that, we could and there was nobody in the elevator or anything like that. Nobody else was in the elevator. It was um perceived and this proved to be true that Ray Rice knocked his fiance out. Now we don't know what happened that led up to that. She might have attacked him first, or he might have just done it based on whatever. But the fact of the matter is that he still knocked her out. Now, ever since then, they have reconciled, they have talked to the media, they have took some classes, went to some seminars, got counseling, so forth and whatnot, and then a month later, they got married. Well, prior to this, Ray Rice had had no incident with the law. He had not broken any rules in the NFL. He had been a model class citizen. Well, after months of talking about it here and there, there was no ruling came from the police department. There was no ruling that came into the form of law enforcement or it didn't go to court or anything like that. But the NFL did announce a ruling about it last week, basically suspending Ray Rice for only two games, which got a lot of people questioning, uh, scratching their heads right and questioning their ruling because the NFL had been known to be hard on its players. I believe it should be four games. Well... This topic was discussed on ESPN First Take this past Friday, Monday for Friday, 10 a.m. And I don't want to talk about the Ray Wright issue itself. I want to talk about the comments Stephen A. Smith left this past Friday. Here they are right here. About you. And here's what I mean by that. We keep talking about the guys. We know you have no business putting your hands on a woman. I don't know how many times I got to reiterate that. But as a man who was raised by women, see, I know what I'm going to do if somebody touches a female member of my family. I know what I'm going to do. I know what my boys are going to do. I know what I'm going to have to remind myself that I work for the worldwide leader. I'm going to have to get law enforcement officials involved because of what I'm going to be tempted to do. But what I've tried to employ the female members of my family, some of who you all met and talked to and what have you, is that, again, and this is what I've done this all my life, let's make sure we don't do anything to provoke wrong actions. Because if I come or somebody else come, whether it's law enforcement officials, your brother or, or, or the fellas that you know, if we come after somebody has put their hands on you, it doesn't negate the fact that they already put their hands on you. So let's try to make sure that we can do our part in making sure that that doesn't happen. Now you got some dudes that are just horrible and they're going to do it anyway. And there's never an, an excuse to put your hands on a woman. But domestic violence or, or, or you know, with, with or whatever the case may be, with men putting their hands on women, is obviously a very real, real issue in our society. And I think that just talking about what guys shouldn't do, we got to also make sure that you can do your part 
to do whatever you can do to make to to, to 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 try to make sure it doesn't happen. We know they're wrong. We know they're criminal. We know they probably deserve to be in jail. In Ray Rice's case, he probably deserves more than the two game suspension, which we both acknowledged. But at the same time, we also have to make sure that we learn as much as we can about elements of provocation. Not that there's real provocation, but the elements of provocation, you got to make sure that you address it because what we've got to do is do what we can to try to prevent the situation from happening in any way. And I don't think that's broached enough is all I'm saying. No. All right. And those were the comments from Stephen A. Smith from this past Friday's First Take show. Now, on that same day, his fellow ESPN co-worker, Michelle Beadle, who does the show Sports Nation, which airs at, I believe, 3 o'clock or 3.30, Monday through Friday, 1 to 2, I think it's 3 o'clock. But anywho, she released four tweets that day, and I'm going to read them all word for word with no interruption. So here's what she tweeted, <clears throat> as I quote. So I was just forced to watch this morning's first take. A, I'll never feel clean again. B, I'm now aware that I can provoke my own beating. I'm thinking about wearing a mini skirt this weekend. I'll hate to think what I'll be asking for by doing so. At Stephen A. Smith, hashtag don't provoke. I was in an abused relationship once. Abusive relationship once, excuse me. I'm aware that men and women can both be the abuser to spread a message that we not, quote, provoke, unquote, is wrong. Violence isn't the victim's issue. It's the abuser's. To insinuate otherwise is irresponsible and disgusting. Walk away. So that was her uh, four tweets. Now I'm going to get on those tweets in a second because there's a few things wrong with those tweets. But I want to reiterate, right now reiterate, I want to translate what Stephen A. Smith was trying to say with those comments. I, I found no issue with the comments. And by the way, he did apologize if he, some people took it out of context or whatever. He apologized on Twitter, I believe twice. And he apologized on Monday's show with Carrie Champions sitting next to him. Now, Carrie Champions is also part of First Take. She's the host of First Take. And as you can hear, she's a female. And she sided alongside with Stephen A. Smith and knew what he was trying to say. So let me explain to you what Stephen A. was trying to say. In a case of a domestic violence uh, issue involving men and women, where men are the abusers, were the abusers in most cases or whatever. <clears throat> He's saying that, yeah, in, in the majority, well, I don't want to say majority, in all the cases, men are mostly the blame, you know. But when it comes to f females in some of these cases, not all of them, not in every domestic violence case, because there are some where men just say, you know what, I'm just going to slap a, uh, slap this female and punch her out for no reason. There's some guys out there, and, you know, we don't tolerate that shit. But uh, in some, keywords, some cases... There's instances where you cannot excuse, I want to say uh, involvement, you cannot excuse the blame factor from the female, from the abusee, because in some cases they were poking the hornet's nest. So in a situation like this, there's only three examples that I can think of where a woman could be poking the hornet's nest, which could lead to domestic violence. One, she cheated on a dude. Two... She'd uh, attack the dude first, either with punches and slaps and he want her to stop, or she grab a weapon trying to do, trying to kill the dude or basic, basically mess this dude up severely. Or three, and even though I don't want to say this, I'm not sure, but I'm going to say it anyway. Money. Money, money, money. So let me give you all the worst case scenario of a female poking the hornet's nest. So she's, she's going out with a dude who she knows have a short temper. This dude have a short temper, short fuse. He'll go off for the smallest of crap. But yet, she still goes out with him. And she cheats on the dude repeatedly. You know, she does it. I'm going to say repeatedly because that's going overboard. But she cheats on the dude here and there. And one day, he catches her in the act of cheating. And, of course, he blows a gasket. And rightfully so because his girl was cheating on him. And I can't understand why anybody would cheat on anybody. To me, that, that makes no damn sense at all. Uh, but that's another story for another day. And instead of admitting to a mistake, because, again, cheating is always wrong. There's no justification for cheating. She stands up for it. She uh, supports her actions and gets in his face and goes at it with him. Again, knowing he have a short fuse. So now he gets upset and knocks her out because, again, he's have a short fuse. Now, yeah, there's no excuse for him knocking her out. He could have chose any other action 
to handle this situation instead of knocking her out. Now, there's an, another example is if, like, she got so mad at the dude that she started attacking the dude, and then his, her punches and slaps aren't working, so she grabs, like, a bat, a metal, uh, metal object, like a frying pan or something like that, or a knife, and goes at this dude. So now the dude mindset is, oh, shit, it's either going to be me getting killed or her getting knocked out. And, again, there's other ways that could have go about it. Like, he could have tackled her and got the rep away from her. Because, after all, the dudes are normally stronger than women in most cases. So, he could have done that. But, since how he was probably fearful of his life. Because, again, she had a weapon on him or whatever. He knocked her out. You know, that's another case where, yeah. Uh, yeah, he got to take blame for the domestic violence because he knocked her out. Even though that was self-defense. I mean, she is as that. But she still caught, you know, got to take some brain because, again, she was poking the hornet's nest in the form of trying to kill this dude, try to do some serious harm to the dude, or to my first example, cheating on the dude and support her reasoning for cheating and support the fact that she was cheating and getting in his face. So those are examples where, I, you know, a dude, you could say, oh, in domestic violence case, the, a female had to take part. In the blame. Now I'm not saying she's to take 100%. percent i am not saying Stephen A. is saying that, or even 50. The most percentage of blame that females should take in some of these domestic violence cases is 25%. Because even though it's, it's like the saying goes, two wrongs don't make a right. So yeah, even though she may have done something wrong to the dude, that's still no excuse for the dude to knock her out or attack her or whatever the case may be. You know, and again, it's a touchy subject. Now, as far as Michelle Beadle's case, where she basically said that, uh, and I just gave you examples of, like, the provoke thing. So, in my case, Michelle Beadle, I'm not saying she supports this, but it seems to me by her tweet that she supports females cheating and support females attacking dudes and things of that nature. Because I'm like, no, you can't sit there and say it all domestic violence cases, women get zero blame. No, you can't say that because, again, in some cases, they've been poking the hardest nest. So, I don't know. I don't support her tweets. But, yeah, that's the end of the game. So, I'll catch y'all later. Peace out. Squad. Squad. From Coward to D.C. Got bitches on they knees. We with the streets, man. Our steeds with they fiend. They got a fact that we... Fully reinvented. Wait a minute. A nigga started from the basement, nah, nah, I get it, now nah, I'm with it. Y'all was hating till I brought it to the pavement, gunning for a milli, for a billy. This motherfucker go silly, feel me, chilly nights, we was hitting the cities. Out there, they ain't care, this ain't fair, suck it up.